Hi everyone, Nina here. Thanks for joining me today. So I can show you how I completed the art journal pages that I created for Art by Merlin products that I started last week. So this is what we finished last week. The backgrounds, we added details and texture and I showed you on the color wheel how to choose the perfect background color for your focal point. So next step, here are the pieces that I'm going to use. They are cutouts from different uh, booklets from Art by Merlin, uh, different releases. And I always like to go around on all the black lines with a black marker. Look at the difference between the two windows, how this one is popping and showing, how the other one is a little fainting. So I always like to outline all of them so they can pop against my background and it will give framing for all of the focal points. Next, I do have uh, many sets from rubber stamps from Art by Merlin. They are some of them are doodling, some of them are flowers. I, I use many of them, whatever I find matching with my background. I use them, I use archival inks, they are permanent. So I do bring one by one, this is, I usually bring a little darker color than the color of the background. So the background is sort of light olive green and here is a peeled paint from my carvel ink. It, it's slightly darker than the olive on the background. So I bring my um, my rubber stamp and I start pressing without acrylic block or anything. I just want it to look sketchy and I don't want it to be continuous and all the same pressure. So some of them are light pressed and the other is heavier. Here again, I'm bringing a darker purple than the purple on the background. And again, I'm pressing randomly with my fingers on the background to create my patterns. These doodlings add interest and details to the background. So what we started with is smooshing the distress inks uh, sprayed with water. And then after that, we did splashes. After this, we added stenciling with the pearly um, modeling paste and then doodling with the rubber stamps. And finally, I use the white gel pen to color inside these stamped areas. It gives a lot of added dimension to the, the details that the doodles create. I don't color all the empty spots. I just randomly color it here and there. And this is how it's gonna look. It doesn't have to be proper coloring, it's just sketchy. I am then going to back all the focal elements, the cutouts, with double-sided foam tape because I want to raise it against the background. It will make it stand more and pop against the background. I did link all the materials and tools that I'm going to use today and I'm also going to look on the top right corner the link to the previous video, part one, where I showed the choosing uh, your focal point and your background color with the on the color wheel and how we made these interest texture and details on the background. I will also leave uh, the link to my blog below for more details and to my Instagram account so you can check all the videos and uh, sneak peeks that I put for each project that I make. Don't forget to check out in the link and the description down below. So look how amazing this is. So this is, we finally chose to put, to put blue on blue here because it was a blue and underwater scene. So this is, look how raised are the elements against the background. For this one, for this one, I was planning to add this little mouse with the cups, but then I found out, I found this house that I thought I really want to use the house instead and the face of the girl, but it wasn't going to look nice, just the face floating in the sky. I, so I thought I'll add this little uh, something that looks like a sun and I would find an, a sentiment that says something about you're the sunshine or something. Let's see what we find in the sentiment book. But for now, this is what I liked it way more. And it matches with the red on her head. So, and the red on the, with, on the house. So I did back with foam tape the house. And then for the sun, I directly added it with glue. With my Nuvo glue directly to the background. Also the same thing with the girl's face. I did add it with the, directly with the glue. And then I'm going to add these cute glasses. They're also cut out from uh, uh, Art by Marlene booklets. 
I did add my glue and then I uh, glued it to her face. Then I'm gonna glue the whole thing on the page. And then I'm going to cut out the rest that is, that is hanging outside. I'm just taking my time to find the proper placement that matches how I'm imagining it to look like and that uh, there is a good distance between the sun and the house. So then I'm going to take my scissors and cut the extra. I have so much fun creating art journals for Art by Marlene products. They are so vibrant and I don't know, they're just so inspiring. I found this extra white part. It's not showing the blue below, which is not making the circle round or looks uh, round. So I did remove a little bit of it so it would show some of the blue behind and would make it look like it's a round circle. And look how cute it looks, so vibrant and nice. And then I did find that the roof of the house was almost blue color and it did blend with the background. So I wanted to make it stand, make the house stand against the background. So I'm just sketching some uh, white lines around it with my white gel pen. These are the booklets from where I got my sentiments that I'm going to add on my art journal pages. And look how amazing it is. I chose black ones over here and say this is where magic happens. And this one says, live simply, bloom widely. And here it says, this is just a good, as good a place to start as another. And this one says, what you see depends on what you look for. Look how amazing they are and all this texture and the, and the details on the background. So remember, this is I brought one of the ones that I did before. So I can cut exactly the same size. I don't remember the measurements. So I did bring the same thing so I can cut the same thing. And I did uh, um, use my corner punch to cut the top corners to make it exactly looking like the previous pages that I made. I also did a punch a holes on top so it can fall in, into the binder. Then I'm going to use my tape runner to put tape at the back of each of the art journal pages and then I'm going to center it uh, to have an um, even frame, black frame all around. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the, all the other four pages. I am going to add to all of them the tape at the back and then I'm going to center it and um, uh, black panel and then I'm going to start decorating with more elements one of the pages that was not punched yet so I just wanted to show you how I make sure that the holes are in the same place I put the previous ones that I made on top and then I mark with a pencil or a white gel pen where I need to punch so the holes are exactly the same and they easily fall into the binder rings. I also use my cropper dial here to punch these holes. Then I'm going to use my tape runner and add the art journal page to the black panel. Same thing. So I am done with all this. Next, I'm going to cover the mirror with the glossy, glossy accents. They give this a glassy look uh, to any surface that you add it to. If you want to add white gel pen here, you can add it before and wait for it to dry and then use this. Whatever you need to do underneath the glossy accents, you have to do it before, of course, because once you put the glossy accent and it dries, it cannot be removed, it's permanent. So I am taking my time. I start by making an outline. I'm gonna do it again on the fish tank. And I start by making an outline and then I fill the inside. I was leaving this part so you can see in details how it's done. Look how lovely it is. It's, it, looks, it looks milky, it has the milky color now, but when it dries, it dries totally clear. So we will do the same thing here. I start by outlining. I take my time. I need to be very slow to make sure that all places are covered. 
I start by outlining the area where, which I want to fill with the glossy accent. I'm gonna also leave it linked down below if you wanna uh, if you wanna check where to get it from. So totally taking my time to put the outline and then I start filling it again circular motions until the whole thing is totally filled. As you go on, some bubbles will be trapped between uh, uh, your uh, parts of the liquid. You just simply uh, pop the bubble with the very thin tip of the, um, of the bottle. It's so satisfying to watch. So here is the part where I find bubbles. I just pop them and fill the space with more glossy accent. Again, look here, it looks uh, milky in color, but then as it dries, it dries totally clear. I will show you the pictures as it dries. You can add it to whatever that looks like a glass, a window, a mirror. You have to leave that until it totally dries. It, I leave it uh, overnight, but I don't know if you don't leave it overnight how long it takes to actually dry. But just to be on the safe side, I chose to leave it overnight. So look how amazing the crocodile is doing the work for me. I just place the eyelets in the hole. I choose the color. This is how I keep uh, my eyelets organized. I got these organizing boxes from Amazon. I'm going to also leave them the link down below. You just place your eyelet inside and then uh, you press with the crocodile tool it is very easy to use and then it just presses the eyelets for you then i bring my lovely enamel dots i love using enamel dots a lot i feel that they uh, give a very uh, a stunning final touch and they look they make your art journal just or your any project just finished with all the shine that they give and the tiny little decoration so for the bottom part on this page, I'm choosing greens to match with the greens on the grass. And then I think I'm going to place a couple lighter ones on top. Yeah. Look how cute and the difference these enamel dots make. So and this is the enamel dots I added here. They still did not dry. I will show you again when they are dry. It, they will look so beautiful. I'm just showing here how I added the enamel dots and look how nice the finish of the enamel dots creates. So beautiful. So at this point, I thought that I'm going to end the video here. And I was just placing everything in my binder. But then in the next morning, I wake up and I find the the fish tanks and the mirror looking amazing and I was like oh, is there any way that I can add any glossy accent on the other two pages and then I realized the car has windows so I can simply add glossy accents on the windows and on the girl I did add it on the glasses I'm trying to catch the light here to show you how amazing the glossy accents look on the glasses and look here in the mirror this is the the day after where everything did dry and look how amazing. So I see how transparent it became, totally clear, not milky anymore. This is totally dry. And again, I did add it over here on the windows. So all of the matching together, all the pages do have the glossy accents. They look just amazing. I had so much fun creating this project, guys, today. I hope you did too. I'm so glad it is complete now. Do not forget to check below the, uh, the link to part one. Thank you so much for being with me here today. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps my channel a lot. Thank you so much for the support. And I will see you all next time. Bye.